Welcome to a special edition of The Point of View. This is your favorite current affairs show on television. And tonight we're celebrating a great school, a school that nurtured the host of the show and a host of other people. Happy are we, studios are we. Tonight we're talking about our 85th anniversary and 25 years since we left that school with a very interesting panel. I'll be speaking to some of my colleagues in industry, reflecting on their work 25 years since leaving SHS. Then we'll tell you about our plans for Saturday when the school brings thousands of people to converge on its Legon campus to mark not just 175 years of Presbyterian education, but 85 years of elite science leadership. All of that and more when we come back. Break up. Welcome back. So tonight we will be interacting with colleagues of mine who graduated with me 25 years ago from the Presbyterian Boys Secondary School. Sat opposite me is Mr. Kobla Nyalete, who is the Executive Director for APSA. He's been a banker all his life and he's very excited to be here. Kobla, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Bernard. How are you doing? I'm doing super and I'm looking forward to Saturday. Wonderful. We're also privileged to have a lawyer who is the president of our year group. Uh, he's called L Lawyer Leslie Oku, a.k.a. Okuman. And of course, he is the president of Ayago. Leslie, good to have you. Good to have you on your show. How are you? How are you doing, my brother? I'm fine. Wonderful. I'm fine. So, Leslie is a um, legal practitioner, studied science, but branched into law, doing very, very well there. Sat next to me as well is a scientist. He's an ophthalm ophthalmic <laughs> surgeon, Dr. Kweku Kwating. Doc, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Koku. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Let me make it easy for you. Just say eye surgeon. Eye <laughs> surgeon. So is it ophthalmology or op ophthalmology? Ophthalmology. So it's like pH. pH. pH, wonderful. Yeah. So let's start with Kobla. Kobla, so how does it feel 25 years since we left school? And um, just your quick reflections on our journey from little boys in that Legon campus to today. Yeah. Thanks, Bernard, and thanks, thanks for the opportunity. It actually feels like yesterday, you know, uh, 1996, when, when we got into Presec, mm -hmm. and uh, then we were little. <laughs> we were little. We were truly little. Uh, I was in House 4, uh, our crow house. As you did say at the beginning, you know, I studied I studied business. Uh, looking back, looking back, you know, we had some very great, you know, uh, tutors. Uh, Mr. Nyante, who taught us accounting. Uh, you know, Mr. Furiata. But then, in, in English, in English, the legendary Mrs. Achampo of you know, blessed memory, yeah. uh, who made out of us really, uh, you know, students of literature. Although mm. we were, we were yeah. students of accounting, management, you know, and the like. Uh, for me, Presec was quite a competitive, you know, environment. Yeah. Uh, you know, back then, you know, we're just these, you know, young people who wanted to really test our strengths against each other yeah. and, and, and do great things. As well, for me, I found Presec quite, you know, religious and, and spiritual as well. Yeah. I always recall a very well-organized SU structure, yeah. right from SU president down to executives, yeah. down to house leaders, and down to sales. Mm. So at that very early age, I, I found it quite interesting that a body run by students, you know, could be, you know, that, you know, organized. Mm. And as I said, you know, I, I was quite a bit towards, you know, the the book side. I spent quite a lot of my time, <laughs> uh, you know, not, not, not doing the... <laughs> A bit of the trips, you know, yeah. uh, stuck to the books quite a... You're, you're a bookworm. <laughs> how, did, did you, how did you choose a, a school known yeah. for science, mm. but then you came to do business? Yeah. What was the 
thinking, was it your, your parents? How did you end up in the school? Uh, so again, so this is it. I actually, you know, selected to read science in, in precept. Is it? And I was denied. Oh, you, you're a disappointed <laughs> scientist? I am. I am, Bernard. I am. <laughs> Today, you know, at the career day, I was telling, you know, the kids. So back then, we used to, you know, we were writing you know, 12 subjects in BC. That year, 96, I scored one in 10 subjects. So that's 95. 95, 95 yeah. right. I scored 10 once. But in that year, you know, Presec said, you know, people like, you know, Kweku Kwati. You needed 11 ones. I needed 11 <laughs> ones to get into science. So I, 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 I didn't get in. I spent the first year probably trying to go to other schools, but it didn't work. I, oh, you, I you actually wanted to do science? I, I tried. I attempted. Oh, wow. I attempted. So th that's my you know, Presec business story. Interesting. Uh, what do you do these days? Uh, these days, I'm a banker. I've been a banker for, you know, over 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, so right after uh, Presec went to Legon, it scoffed at me, Red Banking and Finance, uh, chartered accountant on, on the side, this service at, at Unilever. Thereafter, you know, Barclays. Now, APSA came calling, and mm -hmm. I've been there since. So you've been rising to the ranks, and now you're an executive director. What does that mean? You know, that means, you know, I am a member of the board of directors of APSA, and I, I run, look after the retail SME commercial business at APSA. I will agree with you a bit on banking later, but that's not the purpose of today's program. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me come to uh, uh, my ophthalmologist. You, you are one of the few people who has stayed true to science. A lot of your, our science mates are doing other things. What, what's your precept story? How did you get to the school? Well, similar to Komla, but I chose science, and I got science, luckily. I got into science, and um, in fact, one of the reasons I did science was to be an eye specialist. Even from that age? Even wow. from that age. Hey. And a lot of the people who know me will tell you that this guy has really st uh, stuck to his guns because um, even though I got um, what's it called, admission into some schools in the U.S., I education was high, you know. So I stuck to it, I stayed, and then um, here am I. So even as of 96, yes, when you yes, went yes, into yes, Form yes. 1, you knew you wanted to be a doctor? Yes, I knew I wanted to be a doctor. Where from that clarity? So I think um, basically as growing up, I grew up with my um, grandma in the house and unfortunately she didn't have vision. Oh. So most of the time I used to take her to the hospital, more like being her white king, if, if I, if I mm. put it that way. Yeah. Mm. So I had that, um, you know, inkling towards um, science and towards medicine. Wow. Thank you. So, um, yes, yeah, so back then when my dad would ask everybody, my dad is an accountant, by the way, just like Konyale. Wow. And my big brother is an accountant, and my family members are more mostly business people. Wow. So he would ask everybody and get to me, and I would say, oh, I want to be a doctor. Wow. And he was very, very excited about that. And then uh, I stuck to my guns, and here we are. So when you say you are an ophthalmologist yeah. or ophthalmic surgeon, what does it mean? So basically, I work on eyes, human you work eyes. On eyes. Yes. But you are different from those who give people glasses. Yes, yes, yes. So there is some confusion there. But, you know, there are those who um, do the science of light. Okay, the science basically, of light. they study how light is bent by lenses and... So that's more physics. So that's more physics. And they become more like doctors of optometry. Okay. Right? And then there are the opticians who sort of cut the glasses and fit it in frames for you, uh -huh. like what you are wearing. And then you call it glasses, you know. But then you, are the you look at the eye, so yes, like this. from the medical point of view. So the eye as an organ? Yes, the eye as an organ. With all the nerves and... With all the nerves and its intricacies with communication between it and the body and all that. Wow. So how do you do surgery? How, if, do, 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 because normal surgeries are invasive, right? Yes. So for eye surgery, how do you do it? It can also be invasive, but um, we don't take out the eye. And then but the eye will be there, but you can yes, work on it. Yes, it will be inside the socket, and then we can work on it. I hear these days they have something called laser something. Which one? Laser. So, so you, many lasers. So are like there. you can <laughs> go and use some, the, instead of basically putting gadgets on your eye, I hear there's some light they use. Yes, so like laser that. is essentially light. Right. Okay. And then we use that to do so many different things in the eye. Is it better? Is it just cheaper? Or what, what's the, what's the it depends on how you look at it and what you want to use it for. Wow. Okay. But there are so many uses for lasers in eye. And you work at Kolebu? Currently, I work at Kolebu, yes. How is Kolebu? An interesting place. <laughs> you don't work. want to get into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we are the, not here to talk the, about the, <laughs> the CEO was here a few weeks ago talking about uh, 
Uh, he's actually a presenter, by the way. Yes, yes. So he will be happy for you to talk about working in Kolebu. Okay. <laughs> working in Kolebu is so nice. Is it? It's nice. It's got challenges, no doubt. But then, if you look at the different cases that you are exposed to, and yeah. you know, as a scientist, I'm interested. I'm interested. I'm curious. Mm. I want to see different things. I want to see how things work. Why is this one having this? Why is this not having that? And all those things. And you have all those things converging in Kolebu. Wow. So it makes it a very interesting place to work. So you said a lot of our mates who did science, who went abroad, had to veer off. Yes. So there's a risk okay. that if you leave Ghana, the allure of finance or economics. Exactly. Is Especially before your yeah. undergrad um, levels. So how many in our year group became doctors and Ligon? Ligon, I think we're about 12, if I remember 12. correctly. If yes. you add tech, how many and doctors? Tech, I don't know the number, but in Legon we are about 12 in a class of 75 or so. 12 so of them were Prisek was, wow. of course. Interesting. Yeah. Now, Leslie Oku is an interesting guy <laughs> because he grew up next to CTFM as an Abaka boy. And I know you were a science student. Yes. How did you become Leslie Oku, <laughs> Esquire? Well, um, let's see. After uni, I mean, I did chemistry at KNUST. Pure chemistry? Yes. Serious? Yes. I did pure chemistry. So you did science at Prisek, I went to do chemistry at Tech? Yes. Wow. So I had my national service at Kwaito Aika Pharmaceuticals, and then I worked with them for a while before moving to join a logistics company in Tema. Oh, okay. So it was while in Tema that um, I had some interaction with a lawyer, a friend. I mean, it was through that interaction. I, he actually picked my interest. Mm. I love to read, so I was right. like, okay, why not? Let me give it a shot. So you're actually a chemist? Yes. Wow. So in the conversation with the lawyer, then you said that you want to try law as well? Yes. But were you still working within the pharmaceutical industry? While no, no, no. Law? I actually <laughs> left and I was working as an administrative manager for a logistics company. So you completely moved away? Completely. Why did you go to Presec? <laughs> this is a long story, but let me cut it short. Uh, you know, proud to ask to say in our schools, yeah. right? And that was, there was this euphoria about um, around this brilliant science and math quiz. Even in 95? <laughs> yes. Because uh, we had one yeah, in 95. Yeah. We had one in 95. And then there was this character, Tay Abi. Tay Abi. <laughs> very popular then. I mean, bushy was, hair. Bushy, we all wanted, so, yeah. you know, like most people choosing uh, science, uh, like secondary schools, wanted to be in Presec. For me, like when I attended school, I was one of the smartest guys there. Okay. I mean, the sharks there. So mm. obviously, you are choosing a school. You're like, no, let me go to Presec. Because obviously, you are going to meet the best of the best there. So there's going to be competition. You know, and well, I wasn't disappointed. I met so you wanted to do science at the time? Oh, yes. I wanted to do How science. How competitive was a class? Because if somebody <laughs> with 10 ones out of 12 cannot get science, it means you only got 11 or 12. Um, uh, this, you know, we had this um, mentoring program with the kids this afternoon. Yeah. And one of the things I told them about the school, what makes Presec special, is that um, everybody there is good. You know, coming from my school, I don't remember being second in class. But I got to your, Presec. Your primary school? Yes. Your, your GSS? Yes. I got to Presec, and the first exam we did, my, uh, <laughs> call maths or something. I had 95. And then, ah, I was happy. Then I realized people were getting 100. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> well, your 95 was not, uh, I was said, not in the top 10. No. You know, so when the results came, my report card, I saw my, I was like 17 out of 40. So I was telling someone that, ah, this class is like everybody's crazy in the class. Because <laughs> people were getting 100. And then I realized that's the competition I need. Where, people were coming from which part of the country? Where were you? Everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, he was in science. So everywhere. We have people coming from the northern part. Yeah, 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 the yeah, Kumasianos yeah. also represented. So Kumasiano is people from Kumasi? Yes. They represented well. I mean, they had very good students then. Yeah. I mean, I can make mention of a few that were sharks, mm. actually, yeah. And um, for Accra, most of the guys were from Accra. Mm. Yeah. Wow. But it was very competitive. How is, how is it being a lawyer in Ghana? Well, it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's rewarding if you do it well. When people say it's fine, it means they're making money. <laughs> <laughs> we are trying to Let's survive. talk about today. So the first thing we did, and later on, uh, the, the planning committee will come and talk about the 85th anniversary, so we won't go into detail. But today we went to the school to speak to students. What was the experience like for you, Kobla? No, it, it was rewarding. I would describe it as rewarding. 
uh, overall, you know, the aim was to share with the, the young ones, you know, lessons that we have picked uh, along the way, walking paths that they are yet, you know, to walk. And, and, and one thing I, I found interesting was that at quite a very young age, a couple of the kids are already quite aware, you know, adequately aware of today's world. Mm -hmm. They are aware of, aware of the challenges, uh, you, know, you know, in Ghana, globally, they are aware that, you know, a few years down the road, mm -hmm. you know, some of the, the career path that they would like to probably embark on today, you know, may change dramatically. Mm -hmm. and, and that then afforded us the opportunity to take the conversation to skills that they could, you know, develop mm -hmm. that will make them successful across, across various areas. So you spend time with business students? Yes. I see. Uh, Charles, what was the experience like for you, Kweku? Oh, so for me, unfortunately, I missed most of it. You came late. Yes. <laughs> so you didn't get to I tell them about how to become a doctor. Exactly. You, you so could not. Was, unfortunately, um, I, I really wished I would be there. I had to cancel a whole lot of things to do today. You're a very busy yeah. person, aren't you? Let's yeah. how was it talking to students? Well, um, it was exciting. Um, it felt like giving back to the school, seeing yourself in some of them when you, you got to the school. And you could tell from the kind of questions they were asking that these guys are curious. They want mm. to really know what's going on. Mm. You see? And for me, uh, personally, why I said, um, I think it was fulfilling going back there, talking to kids, um, trying to guide them on career paths and other things. So at least we made them know that it's not a straight path yeah. like that. Some of us, someone like me, I diverted from science to some, you know, and uh, others diverted from science. Now some are chartered accountants and other things. So for me, it was, it was exciting. And I, 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 I felt uh, we could do more and we should be doing more of this program to the uh, students. So I felt like the, we were lucky because when we were in the school, there were three art classes, two business classes, and four science classes. Yeah. One agri class, one visual arts class. Visual arts. Today when we went to the school, there were 24, and this is just for one stream, there were 24 science classes, <laughs> five or six business, five or six arts, three visual arts, so like 40 streams. So I'm not really sure how they are coping. I don't know if you got that sense. The, I mean, the science classes are so many, and the average class size is more than 55, almost 60 sometimes. 60, 66. 66. 66 times 24. It's almost unfathomable. You know, so those are some of the shots. This is the general arts class we went to speak to. I'm, I'm just not sure. A lot of people I ask if they would send their kids to their, their former school. They would say to you they wouldn't because they think that the, the numbers are too, too high and the quality of education if they can afford it, they won't send their kids there. I don't know if we're able to sense the, the congestion. No, yes, you know, you, 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 you know that, that was clear, right? And, and for me, I've been to the school, you know, in the last few years, you know, so I, I've seen the congestion not only today in assembly hall, very big assembly hall, but also in the houses, right? And, and it speaks to, you know, the challenge that confronts as, as, as people, you know, as a country. And it simply points to the fact that, yes, education is important. Yes, everybody should have the opportunity to be educated. But then, uh, as people at, at the national level, we must work harder to increase the facilities and be able to continuously improve the, the standard in, in all areas, be it the boarding facilities, mm. be the number of teachers. You know, for, for example, today, you know, we're told that in the school population of about 5,000, Five, there's, 5, yeah. yeah. right? yes. there's only one counselor, right? There's only one counselor. And you could visibly see... Michael Inakwe. Yeah. We, we thank you very much. But, but clearly, a school of that, this size... 5,000 students with one counselor. Is, is, <laughs> is, 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 is definitely needs in this work. So, you know, we we got to invest a lot more, you mm. know, in, in in education, in public edu education. Leslie, you are the chairman of the year group. You spend a lot of your time going to the school. We are working on a project which we will talk about. Why do you do it? Why is it important to you? You're a lawyer. You are making money. You have work to do. You have family. 
So why do you spend almost every week you are in the school? Why do you do that? Well, I, I, I believe uh, Pesek has given us so oh. much. So it's just right that we also go back and give back to the school. So for me, and I, I believe it's for all of us here, mm. that giving back to the school um, is something that is fulfilling. And secondly, um, let me say this. Um, you know, when we were in school, we had some challenges. Now, with uh, this um, inception of these free SHS, you go to the school, and some of the things, it's so obvious that this is a problem. See, as a year group, I think we will talk about our project. As a year group, we, we identify some of these problems, and then we made it um, a focus to help resolve some of them. So, nothing much to say about that one. I'll, I'll give you the last word. As a scientist trained by Presec, what are your reflections on 25 years after school, and where do you think the school is headed in the next 25? Yes, um, <clears throat> that's an interesting one, because um, currently with the numbers that we have, yeah. compared to the numbers that we had then, um, then it was very interesting, it was fun, um, you had access to things. Yeah. Now I don't know for, re for, um, for certain if the, this access will be available to all students equally. Mm -hmm. okay. But going forward, I still believe that um, if infrastructure improves mm. and we can include more people to get the Presec ideology, that can help. Mm. Okay. But then infrastructure and then human resource and these uh, other important areas must be looked at carefully. Mm. Okay. Well, on the point of view, tonight we're talking to my mates from school. We are celebrating 25 years since we left school. Presec is 85. So I'll be speaking to Koblanya Lete, who's an executive director at APSA. He did business at Presec, and these days he's giving back as the chair of our fundraising committee on the 98 project. Leslie Oku is a chemist ten lawyer who is the president of the year group. He's been leading all our efforts to give back to the school. And Kweku Kwating is an ophthalmic surgeon trained here in Ghana, studies science, is maintained science. When we come back, we'll be joined by the people who are working on the speech day proper and they'll tell us what's happening as we prepare for our 85th anniversary on Saturday. Stay with us. With ATL, you can never be out of style. ATL, bringing fabric to life. Calling all our daddies, students, and well wishers. Join us for an unforgettable day as Presec marks its 85th anniversary with a grand speech and prize giving day hosted by the Odadia 98 year group under the theme Building Upon a Legacy of Excellence, Developing Holistic Values Driven Change Agents. Chaired by Mr. James Boating, 2018 National Best Farmer and Odadia 78. The event starts at 10 a.m. on the 25th of November 2023 at the newly built ceremonial grounds. Speakers for the day will include Dr. Delar. Fiagbe, head of psychiatry at UGMS, and Mr. Kwabna Asantipoku, country director of British International Investment, both proud of Dadia 98. Our guest of honor is Dr. Yao Oseyuducho, Minister of Education, with Dr. Ofori Sapo and Right Reverend Professor Joseph Obri Yabuamante, gracing the event as special guests. Mark your calendars, 25th November, at the Presec Ceremonial Grounds. Oh, come longer, join us as we celebrate 85 years of excellence. Brought to you by the Odadia 98, illuminate with the beam of we are back bringing you the latest lineup 
from Betway. Yeah, what me? Betway starts strong with your front two with free play Friday and swipe bet. I'm a foot now. In the middle, you've got all the control with cash out and build a bet. Plus, with win boost, you can boost your sports bet. At the back, they have smart picks and the partial daily jackpot. You always get way more with Betway. And you want to see. This address has been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Bet responsibly. No under 18. Terms and conditions apply. Betway. Get way more. Welcome back. We are still on a special edition of The Point of View. Tonight, my alma mater, Presec, celebrating their 85th anniversary. 25 years since I left school, three of my mates just left the stage. I've brought two more in. Uh, one is Abdul Nasser Alidu, who's the chair of our anniversary planning committee for everything we're doing. Uh, Abdul, welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you doing? Good. You are smiling for a man who's <laughs> under so much pressure. I like your relaxation. Um, Chris Johnson... Is not my mate, but he's the global communication director of Presec. And he finished in 2004, but he's been working tirelessly for this 85th anniversary. Chris, great to have you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Wonderful. And I have Daniel Foster Koko. We call him Dafoko, who is everything. He's a graphic mm. designer, he's a builder, he's a everything. <laughs> he's been working behind the scenes to make everything possible. One of my mates as well. Dafoko, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bernard. Wonderful. So I'm going to give you viewers a quick recap of where we are in terms of the preparations for our anniversary. Just a short insert. Enjoy. some time back to officially inform the of their desire to do this project for the alma mater. I said, wow, wow, now this is what the school needs. On a few occasions, I drive through the school and you see students coming straight to the assembly hall about 70 or percent of them sitting outside the assembly hall, some of them standing just to attend the morning's assembly. And it's an eyesore, frankly. So what we plan to do is a pioneering initiative. This is the first of its kind in Ghana. The second will be in Ebrigos. When we finish, we finish Ebrigos. <laughs> So that's the journey of our legacy project and every year group when it's your turn to do the speech you must do a legacy project so the tradition is 25 years after leaving school you have to come up with a legacy project and abdul will talk a bit more about that nas so this was april yes why what what was that what was, what was all that about all right so this was the sword cutting okay. for our legacy project okay so like you rightly said on your um 25th anniversary mm -hmm. there are two things that you do you have um, a legacy project that you need to build for the school. Mm -hmm. okay, so the year group decides what legacy project they want to be. Mm -hmm. And then you host the speech and prize giving there. All right. So 
we for our legacy pro project decided to do a ceremonial grounds for the school right. and this was the sword cutting for the ceremony why grounds. ceremonial grounds so it i mean it was an interesting process getting to you know decide what mm -hmm. um project we actually choose All the right. truth is the ceremonial grounds was actually not even the first long list that we drew up for mm -hmm. the project mm -hmm. but you know we had a team so the decision we took as a pro as a committee was that let's have a clear-cut criteria All of right. what we want to we need something that is useful uh -huh. that is easy um, for us to build and that does not cost the school too much and so we had people go to the school do a lot of consultations and I think the thing that, for me, you know, brings home the problem was one night when we were actually going to the school and then we saw the kids all standing outside in an assembly, okay? Outside the assembly. I wish they had that, <laughs> that, that shot. I, th I, you know, I, I think Where they were we have having a, a program outside the assembly outside of like yeah. 5,000 people. Yes, okay. Uh, and and that, that tells you the magnitude of the problem. You have, you know, at every point, any point in time, over 3,500 students in the school. Yeah. Okay. And yet, the assembly hall can only host, I think, about 1,200 people. Okay. So, at the end of the day, it was actually a unanimous decision amongst us that mm. let's do this ceremonial grounds, mm. which will be a place where people can go and sit. I mean, you've talked about the issue of congestion in the yeah. school, right? I mean, this is basically to give people a decent place for them mm -hmm. to sit, mm. do their events, and in, in dignity, you know, and um, uh, it's essentially be able to um, move away from this either being congested in the assembly hall yeah. or sitting outside, you know, in a place. So it's funny, today I was told the school, when everybody's in the school, about 5,400, yes. the assembly hall can take maximum 900, if they push it, maybe 1,000. Yeah. So even with the in, out, out, in, or whatever they call it, the what do you call it, double track, over 3,000 kids. Now, Daniel, what is the, tell me about the ceremonial ground. What is it? Is it like a daze? What is the, what is, what's the whole thing? So we built a daze that would hold about 76 people. All right. And then we've developed, okay, as an addition, we added some um, canopies. Mm -hmm. There were 45 children at a go. But this is purpose built canopies, not like your normal... Yes. Canopy for outdooring kind of canopy. No, 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 no. These are semi permanent structures. Made, made of what? Made of steel. Steel? Yes. So most of them are pipes that are at least three millimeters thick. So that they can, there are things we can just remove or refix, collapsible. Mm. And each one should be able to sit 145 children. Wow. So we are, when we're able to put all 31 together, we can say 3,650. Wow, so that's a massive project. And which part of the school are you doing this? We're doing this in the middle of the school, behind the um, main block A, or the main classroom block. The new mm -hmm. dining hall. Between the new dining hall and the, and the labs. What did the head teacher and the others say about the project? The head teacher said, this is the only place where we can put all students at the same time. Wow, this is the only space in the school where you can have a f proper school gathering where everybody can be mm. because the assembly or like you said takes a thousand we add the overflow set up a thousand two hundred if you have three thousand eight hundred that is more than times three if you put the whole school together at five thousand four hundred or plus that's the dining hall takes just about eight hundred people so there's no space in the place so every event that has a lot of people we go to the field when we stand on the field we destroy it the field becomes unplayable for another six, six or so weeks. So luckily, there's a space between the classrooms that used to host speech days, but has not been properly spruced up. Yes. So the year group decides to, 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 to make it fit for purpose. Fit, fit for purpose, a place where they can all gather, a place where we can all rally. Um, if there's something happening, we all want to be in the same space at the same time. This is the place to be. Chris, you are in a, a global alumni team. What's the general sense of the role of alumni in the school's development? Um, thank you very much, Bernard. And uh, you see, every year comes with something special that, you know, we do. But with Presec, I can say that uh, without the uh, alumni coming together, I don't think we'll be where we are now. 
we used to have you know leaders leading the school and all that but until we got somebody who said charlie i really want to light this torch to benefit both the young and then the old and even current students and if you you cast your mind back to about eight years ago you realize the turnaround time and the projects that you have seen or we've all seen on campus so from eight years ago, you can count about close to about 60 projects that has been done. So you're talking about from 2015? Right? Yes, from 2015 going. About, How many projects? About, if, if I'm not even mistaken, about 60 projects. Refurbishment of uh, uh, the houses, constructing uh, basketball uh, uh, courts, uh, uh, building solar panels, uh, uh, there are a whole lot, and most of these things are even for people who don't even have their kids in the school. And that is what the new school is doing now. They don't care if uh, they have kids, they have relatives in the school, but when you call them to come do something, they come. We have one person who is just building a house, a full house. This is just one alumnus? One person. A house for the master? No, not the master. A, uh, no, a whole house. Not a whole house for students. So, you know, when you talk about house for school, yeah. you're talking about house. Yes, the dormitory, <laughs> as in building a full dormitory wow. for students, one person. And you're saying all of this started in. So, this is when Marque was, was. Yeah, he. You know, we've had. Marque. Yeah, we've had other executives there. Senior, Okante, they've been there. They've been, but for us to go all out and be visible, I think. Uh, this thing started so there's well. some fe positive feeling about the school that yeah. you can say is about a decade old sure. Sure. because of the, the leadership of yeah. and yes. the current global president has continued. Yes, has continued. And that is something amazing because it's like when you, you move something to a certain point and you hand over, you expect the person to run with it. And this man is really running with it. That is Dr. Ernesto Forisa and the global a vice president, that is uh, Madame Patricia Obona, they are... Really so when people running. say we are, we are making noise, it's actually a very recent phenomenon. In terms of the alumni, the bonfire, it's not more than two decades old. Yes. It's, I, a, it's I, a new, relatively new thing. I think I think I'll agree with them. Yeah, we're making noise because we're good when it comes to academics. But visibility, the brand, building the brand, letting people know... This, we were, I think we were not making noise enough. We were good. It's like you have a good product and you don't talk about it. People will just, oh, we are living on past glories. But when you make noise about it, people get to know that. And yes, indeed, after making the noise, they realize that, yes, we've been there since. So the interest the alumni are showing in the school is because of the recent buzz. Yes. And it's contributed. Yes, some kind of, kind of fire has been ignited. And, you know, and it's like, it is not, if you remember, those days just... You have the old people coming over. Yeah. But this man came and was like trying to bridge the young and then... The younger alumni. Yes. So the, 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 there was a weakening. Yes. Is he right? How, how much money is the project costing, costing you? So the project itself has cost us about um, 900,000. CDs. CDs. <coughs> so but then you're also paying for the speech day. And we are paying for the speech day. <laughs> <laughs> so the speech day... And so all the expense for the speech day is the, 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 the year group. Yes, the year group. So how much is the year group contributing to all of this? Um, I, but at the end of the day, we would have spent about a thousand, one point two million, you know, give or take. Seriously, just yeah. the year group. Yes. How many are we? Uh, we are forty, four hundred. Um, so we're supposed to be for about four hundred. Let's say about four hundred people who graduated, right? But actively on our platforms, we have about two hundred and thirty. On our so about half of the group. Yes. And are they contributing? We've. I mean, <clears throat> so the good thing, right? And is we've had a lot of people contributing, right? We've had so many people, and especially, the, I mean, the guys in the diaspora, I didn't expect to see the kind of contribution we're getting, and we've got a lot of contribution um, from them. Interesting, I mean, the interesting thing to notice, the contributions were very slow at the beginning. Mm. Um, you had um, Kobla here, he led the process the fundraising, of the fundraising, <laughs> and, you know, at the beginning, you had so many people pledging, right? Good thing we redeemed about 70 to 75 percent of the pledges that people actually um, yeah. made. Um, and then getting to the speech day, yeah. what you've seen is beyond people now redeeming their pledges, people are now picking specific items to you know finance. Mm. So a lot of people have already contributed cash, but then they come and say, Okay, I'll take care of the food, I'll take care of the 
award. I'll take care of painting. I'll take care of this. Right? And we've also had so many people that contributed their time. Right? So all the artwork, for instance, has been done by um, uh, Daniel Kokoko over here. Um, <coughs> the project manager um, is from our year group. You know, The person who did the engineer that actually built the days is from our year group. Right? So we've also had a lot of people that have contributed their time. Yeah, resources and, and their resources expertise. And their expertise to um, get this done. So it's been a collective effort, mm. and it's been... I don't think we would get here if we hadn't all, you know, come together to actually get this. You know, it's with you, everybody. You've, has been, you've been part of this the speech days for long because of your affiliation. How big is the eighty fifth? Oh, it's it's big. I mean, um, eighty five years is not a small thing. Coupled with NSMQ, coupled with the trophy, the eighth trophy, the school wanting to show the brand. Mm. The brand Presec, the one we are all proud of. Mm. So it's a big thing for all of us. And it's a big thing for those who are not even with us. Mm. <laughs> so, Bella, just let me just ship in. 98 taking over or leading or spearheading the speech day is very, very, very significant to what we have as Presec. Mm -hmm. 98, mm -hmm. we won our eighth trophy. Nice one. Right? Mm -hmm. And we are celebrating our 85th anniversary. Mm. Five years of the school. You get it? Mm -hmm. And again, with what we have with the 85, five times... Straight final. Charlie. Everything is falling in place. <coughs> you get it? It's mm. trophies. So five when years. they talk about we are loud, we, are, we don't even... It's a good bees do us. <laughs> just rattle. Mm. It's, it's just the things that we are doing and people are... And you start to hear the as go beyond the air back now. Wow. Interesting stuff. This is still the point of view. Tonight we're just talking about secondary education. My reflections are very interesting. The, the speech day itself, who are the people coming? And um, what sort of climax will that be? Because there's a lot we've been doing. But it looks like the speech day on Saturday is a climax. Can you tell us a bit about who we expect and who are the people speaking and why the speech day is also important as part of all of this? Okay. So, I, I mean, even before we, you, we go there, mm -hmm. I just wanted to add a bit to... Um, why we chose the sites that we chose today. Yeah. You remember in 1998, we were in Form 3. Yes. And we celebrated the 60th anniversary of yes. the school. Yes. Okay. And that was the place where we did we, our speech day and we our event. We did our speech day and yeah. the 60th anniversary. That same space. That same space. Same space. And the sword was cut. Yeah. And I remember I was actually standing right in front. The sword was cut and we're told there was a library going to be built over there. Seriously? Yeah. Yes. The library never happened. I never <laughs> oh, wow. So, JJ Asari actually cut that sword. For a library? You know, for a library to be built on that side. 1998. In 1998. 25 right? years. Old. 25 years. But then what I also understand is that the um, Odadia Global has basically um, planned the school out, you know, mm -hmm. with, you know, together with school authorities. And that part in their plan has been earmarked to be a, a place for a ceremonial ground. It's already there. It's already so there. we have so, to just work with that plan. So without knowing what they have planned, we actually, you know, propose something that fits into, into what you know, wow. place, you know. So it's actually, it's every, everything coming, everything is coming together, together, you know, yeah. very nicely. But now back to the speech day mm -hmm. proper. So the speech well, day... Let's talk about that when we come back. Let's take a short break. We're reflecting on Presec at... Nine, at did I say 95. 85. And we are 25 years since we left school. Talk about the speech day and what to expect as we get ready for the 85th speech and prize giving day. Stay with us. We are back, bringing you the latest lineup from Betway. Betway starts strong with your front two with free play Friday and swipe bet. I'm a food now. In the middle, you've got all the control with cash out and build a bet. Plus, with win boost, you can boost your sports bet. At the back, they have smart picks and the partial daily jackpot. You always get way more with Betway. And you want to see. Have been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Bet responsibly. No under 18. Terms and conditions apply. Betway. Get way more. Finally, anyone can become a household. Oh, wow. Yeah. You will flip a real estate gaming platform. 
that allows you to play and stand a chance of winning a house or cash or consolidated yeah! plans, such as savings towards a house. Simple and easy to play. Visit www.yougoflip.com Buy a ticket to enter the game. Wait for the end of the game to enjoy the win. Anyone can win. Flip it or own it. You go flip. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Play responsible, not for persons below 18 years, and gaming can be addictive. Welcome back. Point of view tonight is basically reflecting on secondary education, but we're doing it a different way. As we celebrate our alma mater, the school that trained me, 25 years ago I graduated from the school. Went there 27 years ago, some of my mates came through earlier when I had a lawyer, a doctor, and a banker in studio. You haven't even told me what you do, which is funny. What, what, what's, what's your profession? <laughs> so I'm a consultant. I am consultant strategy and marketing. Hey, consultant, they are the people who <laughs> for the money. And you are, what are you? Okay, so I ha I head the experiential department at Charterhouse. So I'm into event man management and uh, activate marketing. things. Yes. Oh, so you there? You are you are living your life. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I I, I, I didn't do it. I did land economy. So you went to tech. Yeah, I was in tech. Did land economy and you know the past. What did you study at Uh I did general arts. Okay. Yes. When did you graduate? Uh, from from uh, Prisic, exactly. that is uh, 2004, yeah. So you went to do, you're a land economist. Yes. And now you do activations. Yes. And you are volunteering your time as a global PR. The director, the global director of communication. Big man. So everything. Mm -hmm. What did you study at Prisic? General Arts. And what, what, I, what did you, what's your work in? So um, I did General Arts um, in the university. I did economics and computer science. All right. Um, did an MBA. Uh -huh. Majored in finance, marketing, strategy. Wow. Wow. Um, did telco, did banking, um, and now... Now you're doing your own business. Yep. You did visual arts. Yep. So you're, you're a graphic designer, Gone into screen printing. printer. He actually printed, when I was in the university running elections, doing my election, he printed my poster. <laughs> <laughs> and, and did I win that election? Yeah, you did. Yeah, I you think did. your poster helped me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the focal concepts. So who, what, tell me about the speech day quickly, Nas. All right, so the speech day, the theme for um, the speech day is building upon a legacy of excellence, yeah. developing holistic values-driven agents. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, what we are trying to say with that is we're going beyond just building um, ad academic excellence. Right? Yeah. We're looking at values, and mm -hmm. we're looking at change, change agents, agents. Not, not people who just come and then yeah. also um, are sitting in the offices. The people that are coming, yeah. we have the chairman for the occasion, it's Mr. James Boateng. So he's the 2018 National Best yes. Farmer, yeah. um, former MD of uh, Cadbury and other year 1978. Yeah. Um, that's the chairman. We have the guest speaker being Dr. Delali Fiagbe. He's the head of psychiatry at University of Ghana Medical School. Is he uh, our mate? Our mate, yes. <laughs> he <laughs> he's is a fellow yes. of the Ghana, fellow Academy of the Ghana of Academy of Surgeons. Yes. Wow. So he's, uh, he, he's our mate. So he's into mental health? Yeah, he's into mental health. Yeah. Very good. Um, and, and we chose these, we chose, we, we chose someone like him, basically, because we have the men. You know? Yeah. We have, <laughs> we have a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, it was actually really difficult deciding yeah, yeah. Who, to, who? who to, because there are so many of them. And so we decided, okay, let's go for the men that people haven't even yet seen. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have a guest speaker, which, who is, no, a guest of honor, who is also our mate, um, Kwabna Mr. Kwabna Santipoku. He's the country director for British, British. International um, Investment. Um, he's also Odadia 1998, our mate. Then we have other people coming. We have the Odadia Global President coming. Um, we have the moderator um, of the Presbyterian The Church, outgoing the moderator, moderator, Reverend J.O.Y. Mante. Yes. Is he professor? Professor. Pro he's also a professor. Oh, okay. Um, and then we have, of course, Dr. Iduchum. Dr. Iduchum, um, who is the guest of special Keynote guests. speaker, um, Minister for Education. Yes. So it's a packed... It is a part and the headmaster himself is also coming. He's the host. You know, the headmaster is the host. Of wow. So we are co-hosting with the headmaster. I mean, it's, it's incredible. So this is Saturday. Is that all? What other, what, what other so activities are we marking? 
perhaps let's talk through the, you know, today we did one of the major activities, which is the career and mentor uh, mentorship. Mentoring day, yeah. where we went into uh, mentor the students. Mm. Um, tomorrow, we are just doing a lot of media rounds. Mm -hmm. And then on Friday, we have an awards um, uh, ceremony for continuing students. students. Yeah. And then we will commission our projects. You know. And then in the evening, the other day 98 group is going to have an, a homecoming. We have some of our guests coming. So we have um, a Brie Girls coming. Oh, the Prem, Prem Pe Boys also say they are coming. We beat them 14-7. We beat them everywhere. We beat them 14-7 in a football match last Saturday. You know, I mean, <laughs> but they say they are coming to help us. Yeah. It's 14-10, 14-10, you know. Um, and then Saturday, we'll have the speech day proper. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday evening, we're going to have a Thanksgiving service. service. Wow. So that's, that's a program. And you say, oh, come along and join us. Oh, yes. come along oh, and join us. Along. It's part of our, it's, oh, Actually. come along and join us. Wonderful. I see. Chris, just a, a little bit more about the, 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 the 85th anniversary, apart from the speech day, what has been happening? Okay, so uh, I think at the beginning we started with the torch and bonfire, which was massive. Mm -hmm. uh, we had one of the you know, greatest artists passing through, which went viral, part of the things that we do. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we, we also did other events in the school. Yeah. And then the big one came again with the, uh, the Grand Deba, yeah. which, is a, uh, what, which took place uh, some months ago, about two or September. Three, yeah, September months three, ago, yes. which was also graced by the president. The president. Speaker, and, uh, former speaker was also there. Former speaker was there, getting on. So you see, I keep saying something. They should just give another day the chance to become the mm -hmm. president. <laughs> Things will be nice. Things will be okay, crash. <laughs> so from, from, from there, then we move straight into the speech day. The speech, mm -hmm. And then after the speech day, we are not done. Okay. We aren't done yet. Mm. We have something happening in December. And since it's five years since we did the uh, Touch Awards, we have something called Touch Awards. We do it every five years. Wow. So after, before, if it's not the fifth or if last year like this, we did the President's Ball. So mm. if we don't have uh, the Touch Awards, what is in place is the President's Ball. But wow. five years ago, we did the Touch Awards. This year, it's another Touch Awards, Touch Awards 2023, which is happening at the Grand Arena on the 21st First. First of December. It's a lot happening. Yes. So that is where we are going to, you know, uh, reward uh, year groups, mm. individuals, people who have really help the school. So these are the things we do to, you know, challenge people to, you know, come support. Because Reverend Marco, when he took off, he said, the three T's. And you know what the three T's are? Tell me. Your time, your, 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 uh, treasure. your treasure, and then your talent. Oh, in that. Yes. <laughs> Guys, if you have the, the, the jingle for the speech, if you can drop it one last time, then we will rise and join but, it with but, the anthem. But, but so at least let's... Um, I think it's you important to also give people an opportunity to support us. You don't, have the, you don't have the jingle, but you played it before the show started. Um, I can see some invisible hand. <laughs> <laughs> I, can see, I see some invisible hand moving. What you yeah, so, no, I'll, I'll say it's important to give people an opportunity to support us. Right? Yeah. Um, we've, I mean, and we've had some good people you know, come in to support us. So if anybody wants to support, there are several things you can do for us. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, for the speech day, you know, we are taking drinks, we are taking water, we are taking anything that anybody mm. can, can give. Because you are feeding 5,000. Yes. We are feeding over 5,000. We are feeding <laughs> with five loaves and two fish. Exactly. <laughs> Very serious. So, you know, so if anybody wants nine to give, it, it, I'm you know, telling you. Ask, we are happy to receive it. Yeah. Um, we are Momo number. If we oh, put it out. Can you put it on the screen? You know, it's 54 yeah. All right. Okay, so 54 Six one 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 two three three. Um, so if anybody wants to support us, you can. Uh, I had wanted my colleagues to join, so we sing the anthem. Oh, sure, sure. Happy are we, guys? Come, you don't need a mic, just come. Let, let's sing. We have to do it. We have yeah. to do it. We it's very important, it. even though it's funny. My producer went to a crack academy, so he's not very happy with that. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're not going to play, play, play there. So the a, lo a, a lot of the things that are going wrong on the show, are, <laughs> you can tell, you can tell the invisible. You hand. can see a crack at the back. Yeah, Coco, Coco, you, you can give us the, the thing. Happy are we? Happy are we? One, two. two. Happy are we, studios are we, students of Presbyterian Secondary School. Onward we march, we try along to happy victory. 
to victory, to victory. A moto is a soul above our providence alone. Illumine it, illumine it, to be the famous lume. In the light, the light, we shall see light. Illumine it, to be the famous lume. For Christian training, Christian training, we show solid, solid, and this will take our places in the future of our country and chair. For Christian training, for Christian training, we show solid, solid, and this will take our places in the future of our country. Who come along and join us? Who come along and join us? Happy studios are we? Christian training, we get training, show solid for live, and is to take our places in the future of our country and chair. For Christian training, we get training, show solid for live, and is to take our places in the future of our country. Oh, come along and join us, oh, come along and join us, happy studios are we. Hey! Hey! All right, that's the end of the show. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>